wife of the president, Aisha Buhari, says the population of out-of-school children in the northeast is happening. Mrs. Buhari, who said this during the inauguration of her pet project, Future Assured Youth Education and Empowerment Program, aimed at training 750 young persons in Adamawa, said the situation required the government's urgent attention. She said, and I quote, the case is most disheartening in the northern states where insurgency, poverty, and social cultural norms have played key roles in further worsening what is left of the ruins of dilapidated structures, insufficient and poorly motivated teachers at all levels, end of quote. According to her, education deprivation in northern Nigeria is driven by factors such as economic barriers and social cultural norms and practices that discourage attendance in former education especially for girls. And still with me in the studio is the Kari, Kiari rather, Bukar, who is the co-founder and managing director of Trans Sahara Group. We're still talking about the matters of education. Before we went in the other segment, you highlighted, yes, that social cultural norms are there uh, as the issues. She also talked about um, the economic factors. And I know as the former uh, chairman of the Nigeria Economic Summit Group that you have a lot to say. Uh, we also you, uh, talked about the 87% of poverty level that is resident in the North. Now help us put this again in context. What's the relation between these? Are we seeing any uh, relationship really, so to speak? The, the, the correlation is actually very stark and one can see it uh, in the sense that um, according to the World Bank, um, mass poverty, this, that is people earning less than 700 naira per day. Mm -hmm. um, in Nigeria, that population has reached 100 million. Basically, basically, that means that we have the highest number of um, extremely poor people in the world. Um, it used to be India. India mm -hmm. has lifted the extreme poverty level out of that. Uh, in Nigeria, out of that 100 million or so people living in extreme poverty, same uh, World Bank study showed that 87% of them live in the north. That is actually a clear correlation of education mm -hmm. level or education to extreme poverty. Mm -hmm. You can see uh, in the earlier discussion that I made that uh, as you go up north, the graduation rate of secondary school falls. Mm -hmm. And that basically is a clear testament to the fact that education should be seen as a critical investment. Uh, in as, uh, It's as dire as investing in infrastructure, really. Right. Uh, education and healthcare particularly are the two investments that has the highest return on investment for any nation. So in uh, the core north, what, what needs to happen is for the states, local governments, and the federal government to address the issue of um, uh, out-of-school children, mm -hmm. um, uh, girl-child education. But the other thing is that it is not just reading and writing that matters, really. It is not the certificate that matters. The most important component of education that seemed to be lacking, uh, particularly in Nigeria, is technical and vocational education. Right. It gives people or youth um, life skills, skills that would basically empower them and give them the necessary skills to make a living, a decent living, mm -hmm. out of that training uh, for the rest of their lives. Uh, be, uh, if you combine that technical and vocational education along with entrepreneurship studies, then they could even be more independent-minded, mm -hmm. highly skilled, employable individuals coming out of the school systems. So I think those are some of the uh, things that ought to be done or actually must necessarily be done mm -hmm. if we, are, we, will we will take a large population out of poverty. But it, there is also a correlation between extreme poverty and insecurity. Yeah. Show me a location there. where there, there is a huge p extreme poverty and I will show you an, a, an unsafe uh, environment. Mm -hmm. And that is what is happening. It is not just the insurgency such as Boko Haram, but it is the herdsmen, uh, farmers crisis, the high increase in rampant kidnappings, banditry that's going on. And the more, the, I mean, I've seen a 2019 number uh, that I, I believe it is from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics that mm -hmm. showed that 
Uh, I believe Kaduna State now has the highest number of deaths related to kidnappings and banditry than even Borno State mm -hmm. that have uh, Boko Haram uh, insurgency. That's a 2019 number, and, and that's a cause for concern. And you look at the surrounding areas, especially in the northwest and the northeast, you begin to see these issues continuing. Yes, the Nigerian security uh, agencies are responding or trying their best. However, there is a huge gap. Mm -hmm. And the gap is it is not a response for uh, violence to violence. It is actually there has to be soft, softer response, which is equipping the kids, empowering the kids, educating them. Those are in the long run going mm -hmm. to pay more than, you know, bombing them or, you know, responding the way with, we've with, seen. with weapons, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, thank you so very much. Yeah. We'd like to keep it, but in the interest of time, this is the much we can take. Sure, thank and you. And that's uh, Bukar Kiari uh, speaking with us.